What's going on, everybody? Happy Friday. Bobby Fi with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. Glad you guys are joining us again. Uh, again, reminder to join the uh, True DFS uh, Discord channel. And uh, just talk. Make sure, to, make sure to drop that in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the YouTube link. Yeah, I don't have the constant link yet. I, I will. I will do it. But I, and people keep asking for it. But at the same time, you can also just go to True Life. I'll, I'll, we'll take care of that. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, coming off a night where I, I pretty much was, you know, in the top three uh, of all the big ones for, I actually had, the, I was in, in second and, and fifth with more time remaining than everybody else between the two sites and then both big ones. It looked like I had a shot at, at either and they had blockers because I had the Russell and uh, Lillard on one and I had LeBron on the other. Um, but it, uh, it didn't end up breaking my way. The overtime kind of killed me uh, from what would have been a great night and it ended up being a slightly profitable night still. So I'm not going to complain. Sheets, you had a nice night. Why don't you talk about yeah, that? I did, I did nicely and, and let's, let's go back to process. So um, you know, this Brooklyn game was a really big one to get right. And I was really, really proud of what I did because when I ran my stuff, I had like 90% Bruce Brown and I had about 90% Maxi as well. Um, and I had all kinds of, of, Dan of Danny Green and all this stuff. And then, you know, we, we were talking through it and you made some incredible points about why Bruce Brown was just like, just not a good play. So you know, I wasn't going to completely toss him as a result of it because my projections just really liked him. So what I did was I just kind of weaved through all my Bruce Brown lineups and just kind of just filtered in some DeAndre, some DeAnthony Melton, who I brought up a bunch of times, and he did really nicely. I went to Chioza. And then a little interesting tweak that you reminded me to do was to make sure that the Chioza ones were not the same ones as Bruce Brown. And that made perfect sense. And that and that, that, that worked out really nicely. But then what was, um, what was I think, really important and what, the reason why I made money is I didn't make money in like the scripted stuff. I made money in like the single entries and basically everything I hand built. And the reason why is because I really took time to, to make sure that the, the, the builds for those were somewhat correlated. Um, and the optimizer is just not going to do that for you. You know what I mean? And I wanted to just kind of just make sure that I was kind of stacking around a little bit. So I ended up, um, I ended up, and we, I talked about this a couple of times during the live stream, you know, dude, I'm going to probably have a couple of, of Luca, of Luca, um, of Luca Jokic's, man. You just don't know them. They're really freaking expensive, but you know, these things, the guys get it going and, you know, and neither of these guys were doing that great. And then the fourth quarter, they both went freaking ballistic and, 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 and Jokic made a totally miracle, you know, bad two at, at the, at the, the buzzer go to overtime. And then I was, um, and then I, uh, so I ended up getting second in one of the single entries. I ended up getting like uh, top 30 in like the slam or something like that. And, nice. and I, and I, I made the money in the monster on FanDuel also. So I ended up, I ended up a really, really nice night. And the, the guy who actually just got, got it for me at single entry was your Kleber. He, um, he went, he, he went, he went sort of nuts in the fourth quarter and in overtime. I mean, he was great. You know, that, that was a, you know, I don't want to get into to, to feeling bad about, I had a good, look. I, I cashed in, I played three lot, three of the, my big, my big lineups on, on FanDuel. They all cashed deep, two of them were in the top 40. But the problem was I switched two of them from Kleber over to Hernan Gomez, which wasn't a huge difference because they both, I mean, if you first look at it, but 10 points is going to be 10 points. You know what I mean? And, and uh, had I left Kleber in there instead of Hernan Gomez with the stack, with the, the Luca and uh, and and you Joker, it would have been nice. Um, so this was this was by the way. So this is the one that uh, the single entry one. And dude, I could have done better with DeRozan. Yeah, DeRozan had with DeRozan a little bit. Yeah, DeRozan was murdering it, and then uh, and then he but but uh, you know this one was uh, was was well it was the Chioza and Melton. I think this is the this is the double uh, kind of the double fade there. That's what and and I had we, ran bad with, we both ran bad with Prince. I had Prince like seventy percent, and he just. Yeah. What happened was TLC, who couldn't make a thing, all got hot all of a sudden in the second half, and they had left TLC in instead of Prince. So uh, took away Prince's 30-point game, unfortunately. But and, and the other thing is that I'm not particularly upset. I mean, the upset that I reduced my maxi from 90% to 50%. The reason why is because it wasn't appropriate to have it 90%. It just wasn't. There was just other ways to go. And so I was very happy. And what was really interesting is that he ended up 0.9%, um, I think, on FanDuel. Um and that's that's the way it works on FanDuel, actually. Sometimes, you know, because like you don't need those cheap cheap guys as much on FanDuel. So those guys that end up chalky on DraftKings, if they really blow up, I mean, he didn't really blow up. And and, and I'll tell you something else. Here, here's another thing: I happen to be watching him. I, I, I have bad news. He sucks. And I'm going to tell you why. Wait, who sucks now? Maxi. He sucks. Oh. Um, and, and the reason why he sucks is he's taking. 
he must have really been taught poorly in high school and college. The guy is just addicted to taking these like terrible twos, like one step inside of the three point arc. Freaking horror show. Um, I mean, he's fine. He's active. He did it for me. And I, dude, I really thought that Doc Rivers was going to go on tilt and leave the reserves in for the whole fourth quarter. Um, and if that were the case, I would have killed it. Then, then Maxie would have went, went, but went, went really off. But uh, he actually tried to win at the end there. Um, so, so what do you think, man? So we got, we got Kyrie. Just, I hate to say being Kyrie. I don't know what he's doing. Um, it's hard to. It's, I just want to before we do anything. I'm not gonna even on our Discord channel. I'm not gonna embrace any of the the Kyrie hate or how weird he is right now. It's a weird time. A lot of people have different takes on what's happening in the world and and feel that you know it's very unjustified that if had that been a different protest or even a different peaceful protest, which this was obviously not the mob I'm talking about. And I'm telling you right now that I, I would not. I, I I think that is at least somewhere in his mind. So let's not go off on him yet, and let's let's be um, sensitive. Uh, well, the other thing that, that's in play tonight, again, I brought this up, is you know, so Seth Curry, you know, he he ruled himself out because of COVID, go, and then he like sat on the bench for a quarter apparently, and then he said, oh, maybe I should self isolate or something like that. So I I really think that considering the NBA is somewhat, you know, I think they're more, one of the more conservatives, right? They they're the ones that went to the full bubble. Right. I, I think there's a, I mean, unless there's a been an announcement made that, that this is not the case between the Kyrie, when I, I think that there's a non-zero chance that this game gets canceled tonight. Um, just because they were all like part of that Philly thing. They all played against Philly. They were all there. And, and, and Phil and Philly is actually staying in the whole team. I think is staying in New York for another day or something like that before mm-hmm. they're leaving. There was something about that. So that's, that's, that's a wild thing to keep in mind on top of like, all the other injury news that could be, could be piling in. So this is, this is going to be a wild one, but my, without getting too much into it with, with, uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to political discussion about all this stuff, but I, I'm maybe, maybe it's cause I'm, I'm a little older. I don't know. I, for, for, for me, you know, I, I'm, I'm upset about a lot of stuff that goes on in the world and I still manage to come to work. That that's, that's the best I could. That's the best I'm going to say. And I hear you. I know he's different. He's a public figure and he's, very you know, he can make statements that I can't and things like that. He's a man who wanted to start his own league. And I'm yeah. not he's right or wrong about any of these things, but it's yeah. unfair, in my opinion, to judge him entirely for it. That's all I was saying. Absolutely. But, you know, he's, he is a public figure. So he's, you know, he, he, he probably should say something. He should say something <laughs> to his coach, at least. I'll give you that one. I don't understand not telling your coach um what's going on there's no reason to to to, to just disappear as if like he was a 14 year old girl and, and i'm actually afraid to ask i actually know his uh his um his his dad's roommate i'm really friendly with his dad's roommate uh his dad was was my friend's roommate in college so he he knows Kyrie's dad like really well. well that's wild yeah this guy's this, this guy i know him a long time he actually is one of the coaches in bc he's actually one of the highest paid assistant coaches in the ncaa he's Name is uh, Scott Spinelli. He's a uh, assistant for PC. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. So he he was he was Kyrie's roommate at BU back in uh, back in back in the day. So he's. Uh, wild. I'm afraid to ask. So. Oh, <laughs> Last yeah, time yeah. Kyrie was doing something where he was threatening to opt out back in uh, back you know in the bubble, yeah. I, I said Spinner, what the what the hell, man? Tell your tell your freaking tell your friend to get his son in freaking line. Whatever, whatever I said, <laughs> he's like, dude, there's nobody could talk to that guy. That's what, that's, what, that's, what, that's what he told. He's me. On his own plane of existence, that's for sure. All right, uh, you ready to get into it? Yes. Let's go game by game. Yes. And I'm probably, I'm kind of like an A with respect to having my projections in order. I'm a kind of a B with respect to having possible injury news in order. Um, well, it's so, very hard to, to know the injury stuff. This is going to be, so, and there's a lot yeah, of other games. There, there, there's some, obvi- some kind of obvious ones, um, which we'll get to. So Phoenix, Detroit, um, may, maybe this is one of the least, uh, I guess the least interesting. Um, so on the Phoenix side, yeah, the usual dudes. I mean, like Chris Paul, Aiton, Crowder. Like nobody, no, excuse me, Chris Paul, Aiton, Booker. None of them really like stand out, but none of them look like totally horrendous. I think that a lot of um, plays when we get down to it is going to come down to, well, this is a big slate and they're just better opportunities. Yeah. And I think this whole game is part of that. Um, like I can make it like if you tell me there's a three game slate, I can make a case for some of the Detroit guys, but I don't think I have to. I this is game might be kind of a throw out. I don't know. Yeah, I, I I'm gonna have some Booker on FanDuel. Um, I'm yeah. just gonna keep doing this. I don't I don't really he's 7600 on FanDuel, 
And by the way, like, you know, it's like, like, as I keep saying, it's not like he's, he's killing lineups without, you know, going off. And we know the game is always there. And like, if there was a time to go off, maybe against possibly the worst defensive team in the NBA, even though they play a little slow, they are faster than Phoenix, but they, uh, Phoenix is the, the slowest team in the NBA. Um, maybe you get a little bit more up tempo. Maybe you get a little more Booker action and, and maybe he catches, catches fire one of these times. And I, I think it's just, it's just a matter of time. So I have a little bit of interest in Booker on FanDuel. Uh, I also expect Aiton at some point to have a decent game, but right now they've got a nice thing going for Phoenix as a real basketball team. And there's just nothing on either side of this that I really want to play. People are going to ask me later about Josh Jackson revenge. One thing is this game is in Detroit, not in Phoenix. Um, and honestly, I don't think he has the ability or not the ability. No, but, he's, <laughs> but, um, but I do think that Mason Plumley is getting overlooked a little bit. And I understand that the last couple games have been pretty gross. Um, but at 5,200, I maybe we could we could consider him as sort of a middling play. There's better plays, but he's right, a guy I'm who this, I'm writing this down, sir. He's on my list because they're going to play Aiton, you know what I mean? And, and how else are they going to match up in Phoenix? you got to think with with uh, with Aiton. And uh, Isaiah Stewart makes some sense, but I mean, really, is he really going to play all that many minutes? So I think you're going to get the back to the 28-plus minutes of, of Plumlee. And in that case, at, at 5,200, I think he's definitely on the list. And I don't think it's that, like – bold or anything but it's yeah you're right there's probably better plays in this slate but at 5200 you double pair him with tice at center and spend up everywhere else in your business so that's the one thing i had on my, on my mind here so correct me if i'm wrong but basically the entire united states of america is out for boston except for like the starters right it's, it's like um yeah so taco fall baby oh let's go my. let's get a little oh taco my. fall action oh why my. not Oh my. On a monster slate, how could you not want to play Taco Fall at his first time in the worst possible matchup for him? Well, great matchup in the sense that he should get fantasy points. Yeah, just, just, just let's hang on for a second. So Williams is out. Thompson is out. Tice is starting. Yeah, Tice Tatum, is Tatum might play some five. Um, Jalen Brown is going to play 49 minutes. Um, uh, Marcus Smart is going to play a lot. I guess I'm going to start with the easy ones. So for me, we'll talk about Taco Fall in a second. Um, for me, I'm going to start with, with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Um, I think they're awesome plays. I, I'm a little nervous about Marcus Smart with a thumb thing. That, that's the only thing that bothers me. Um, I don't know if it should bother me that much, but uh, there's that. And then Tice, I mean, is uh, maybe this is kind of the moto play, but he's at 4,300 on DraftKings. I, I don't know. So, so for me, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start no, with those. No, Tice guys. is like the. He's. I think he's gonna be like the ultra ultra chalk. He's like the most. Yes. Well, yeah, he has to be right. I mean, yeah. No, no. Without even a slight hesitation. He, but he but as him. I mentioned, I mean, like you know, uh, Tatum could play five if he had to. So it's not it's as if it's, it's not as if Daniel T Tice has to play 36 minutes. Um, so I mean, they do play bigs in Washington. Yeah. But who cares? Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, like, I'm really worried about like, 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 boy, if I don't have someone match up against Thomas Bryant, we're going to lose. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's a, uh, from a rebounding standpoint, there there could be some issues there, and also they play big separately. Ru People forget that Rui is also like six ten and like is a big dude. Um, we'll get into that in a minute, but I, I do think that it's worth talking about real quick because I, I think that you're going to see Taco Fall play some minutes tonight, and I think you're going to see Tice play probably thirty plus minutes, maybe maybe just under. And also, Tice the reason he doesn't usually get to thirty is he usually fouls out by then. <laughs> so if that happens, and I'm not saying they'll go straight to Taco Fall, I know they happen to love Taco Fall. Um, and I, like, I'm just, I'm just throwing him out there as a wild card play. If you're going to skip Tice somewhere, I'm not saying you have to play him. I'm just saying we're going to get better value. I just thought it was fun. He's a fun guy to root for. It's a terrible matchup kind of thing. Cause they're going to run up and down. And that's the one thing he can't do is run. Um, he's just too big, but, but yeah, you're right. Tatum and Tice and Brown are the guys here for me. Yeah. Um, and you like Marcus Smart too, by the way, I still like Marcus smart. Um, I like him better on Fandle where, Percentage wise, he's even more cheap. He's even cheaper, like 5,900 versus just point guard eligible over here at 63 and he's shooting guard over there. Um, so I like him a little better on FanDuel than I do on, uh, on DK. 
You like the big. The, oh, he's the point guard now on, on Fanduel. That's not. Then I like him a little bit less than I thought I would. Okay. You like the? Do you like the? Uh, the big two on. Um, on Washington because I, I, I like them, but the other the two guys I like the most are um, one guy you alluded to is uh, Rui Hachimura and uh, and Davis Bertman. Yeah, I think that those are the guys I like. Um, I'm having trouble with the other ones because I, I, and it's probably worth noting the other night that when Bradley Beal put up five zillion points that Westbrook still had 56 fantasy points in that game you know yeah it, it's it's if you want a guy who say I mean this guy has scored over 50 fantasy points in every game he's played this season now you're going to need more than that in this matchup and this is not a dream matchup the the way it does work for Westbrook is this cheat you know my strategy with these guys we 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 know basketball it's these these guys have emotions I know that you're good at taking emotions out of things these guys have Westbrook especially and Marcus Smart that kind of stuff just drives him nuts. It's like why it's why Westbrook used to go off against Beverly every time. Wait, so so what's the deal with Marcus Smart and Westbrook? Marcus Smart is the most tenacious in your face defender on the perimeter in all of the NBA. Okay. I'm saying little stuff, any little extra thing to get Westbrook going. He pisses him off, he tur- turns the ball over, he just keeps attacking. That's what he's gonna do. Okay. Um, so I, I so I like Westbrook and Beal a little bit. I don't know where they're gonna fit out in on my rankings, but I I, I agree. I think Hatchimura is too cheap. The minutes are coming up. I think we're going to see him be able to have some success against this weak Boston front line. Um, and even Brown and Tatum, who are good defenders, he's just bigger. Um, he's a big dude. He got bigger in the offseason, too. Uh, so I, I think he's, he's got a good chance of getting 30 for us tonight at 4,800. Um, and I like Davis Bertans with getting the, the time back, especially like with a three point bonus here and all that in play and him getting 33 minutes. I just sort of feel good about him now where I wasn't so sure, I, you know, in that game the other night against Philly, like the, the way Washington plays, these guys can all get there too at the same time. I mean, you got 28 from Bertans in that game, 56 from Westbrook and a million from Beal. Um, so I, I don't mind if you use a couple of these guys together because I do want to play a few Boston guys. I'm just struggling with, do I really want to spend the salary on Beal and Westbrook? Cause there's some guys in later games who are a couple thousand cheaper who I'm absolutely in love with. And I don't think anyone's going to go there. Ooh, I can't wait. All right, we'll get to it. <laughs> um you want to move on yeah um i do like this i mean you, again you're gonna the demi if you're, if you're mass entering on on DraftKings, i think you have to set a, a rule where you have at least one or two players from that game just in yeah. Boston. i really do um but maybe it'll change later depends on what oh what excuse up. excuse me uh, you know I, I would like to to give some credit where credit is due um you know again we very rarely we, we put some we 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 throw out our and our against the spread takes very, very infrequently. Um, but when we do, I think our, our our record is pretty freaking strong. And while he didn't exactly say that, oh, I love these guys against the spread, he was, Bobby was pretty damn adamant about the fact that it was a good spot for the Nets last night yeah. um, with, 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 with all those guys out. He said it in, in very, un, very certain terms in several different contexts. And, uh, and it's, it turns out the only blowout run we were wor- we ended up being worried about is from the Nets. <laughs> I don't know what it is about that team, man. I've seen the same story for the last three and a half years. Call it Nets culture. Call it whatever you will. There is something about the way that team cheers each other on and goes nuts for each other. Whenever they've had their best player out, going back to the Russell being their days, they just play better when their star is out, at least for the first game. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that. In the bubble, they did the same thing. They missed everybody, and they were, they were competitive every night. Anyway, keep going. All right, so uh, you want to move on, Charlotte? Yeah, we got another good one here. Is it? All right. Okay. Um, I don't want to play. <laughs> I don't know. You want to play LaMelo Ball at 6,500? I don't know. We got the Ball I, Brothers, baby. We got narratives all over the place. Yeah, the so my 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 narrative is um, my narrative is I'm playing Zion and maybe Brandon Ingram, and that's it. So you can, go ahead, talk about this game. Well, I like the, the, I like the talking about Zion. I'm, I'm, I'm huge on Zion as usual tonight again. So Zion, just like Luca, and by the way, I know it sounds crazy to say after Luca just put up seventy something again or whatever, but Luca is completely out of shape. Um, there's no question. Well, that's he's interesting. Not, he's not even close to in shape. He's trying to work himself back. The I actually was listening to a podcast the other day where they were saying that he, his plan is to play himself into shape, and that they knew he was out of shape, and the team is fine with it. They just want him to get it going. They like to get go, get it going a little sooner than he did. Um, so so anyway, so same thing with Zion. Zion is not in in shape. You could see it the other night. They had to pull him with like two minutes to go and they were like almost offense for defense substituting him in overtime. They had to pull him. Um, it's just a little concerning, but I don't care. The power forwards have absolutely destroyed Charlotte. There is no physical matchup on their team that can match up with him. Maybe, maybe he even gets some five run tonight again, which I would love. 
And I think that Zion is on, you know, he's, he's going to get there soon. I mean, we need, we need to get a little bit more of that rebound upside. We need him to rotate a little better defensively so he can get a shot blocking upside. Cause he is a guy who's going to be getting multiple shot blocks a game. Once he gets in shape on DraftKings here, I think you're right. He, he or Ingram both make sense. Uh, I'm willing to take a shot on both balls tonight in this game. Uh, I don't know how it's going to play out, but uh, I certainly do like the idea of watching it. And, and especially like, yeah, I'll throw in some, some maybe joking lineups with the two of them to say, not joking lineups, like just lineups that aren't going to be as, I don't expect much from. But I do think LaMelo is a pretty good play here. And they sort of are letting him do whatever he wants. And what do you think he's going to want to do going up against his older brother <laughs> for the first time? It's a terrible slowdown matchup for Charlotte, but it's an up pace matchup for New Orleans. I don't know. All of these guys, LaMelo, PJ Washington, I think is still in play at 5,700. Uh, I, I think that he's, I think he's too cheap. I really do. I think he's a six K plus player. He's going to have some foul trouble issues, some weird things, but you look, he took eight shots the other night and put up 36 fantasy points. And that's because he didn't get his double, double bonus. He was one rebound away. Believe me. I know because it would have taken me, taken me up a hundred thousand dollars more. Right. <laughs> um, uh, I also think Gordon Hayward, you know, again, they're letting him do his thing on the offense. He's, they're running things through him and he was lights out the other night. I don't think we can rely on that exactly again. But even at 8,400, he should be at least on your list. So that's where they all are. They're all in play for me. Devontae, Devontae Graham, even over on FanDuel. You know, Devontae Graham put up 35 fantasy points with uh, shooting two for 14 the other night. Uh, I know there's some steals and stuff like that. But I, I sort of am into all these Charlotte guys. But the problem is they sort of cut into each other. So if I had to, if I had to try and – I don't think you need to play any of them. I think P.J. Washington feels like the safest. Um, but I think I'm going to take some shots with the ball. And, and, and I do think that with, against a team that plays big – uh, Bismack Biombo is in play, but probably won't make it by the end of this, the slate for me. Okay. Oh, uh, one last guy. Yep. Terry Rozier. There is an upside for him. Um, we've seen it just, we've seen it recently, even, uh, I, I wouldn't just cross him off the list right away, but it's, it's probably going to be hard to get to him on this slate. Okay. So here comes a little tilt. Ah, actually, it's not, a it's not, it's actually kind of funny. Um, so I want you, I want you to read this. Omari Spellman is expected to be waived with the Knicks planning to sign veteran Taj Gibson. <laughs> That's pretty oh, funny. Um, signing Taj Gibson, Thibodeau. Man, it's so funny. I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. It's his guy. Yeah, it sure is. But, but he was on the team last year. Yeah, I know. I know. I didn't even know he was. It was. Uh, I thought he was tired. Yeah. So okay. Knicks OKC. Well, on Fanduel. Uh, Elf Payton is going to be like a hundred percent owned, I think. Um, and I, like I said, I'm not, I'm never, I'm not into like locking in Elf Payton too often. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's certainly possible. By the way, the Galaxy brain play worked the other day. He did it actually pretty well um, when 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 all the guys were back. But who's that? Show? I don't. Go ahead. Who, who did pretty well with everybody? Remember Payton? I, I played him when. Oh, you uh, played him? No, yeah, exactly. When, when all the guys back. So Payton does look to be like a, like a strong 6,500. I mean, like he's projected to be a good play, but is he really at 6,500? I don't know. I'm going to have to ask you about that. Um, but the thing you have to remember about the Knicks, and again, we said it before, like the first preseason game, like they're all, all the starters, if you know who they are, are going to be in play literally every single game. Okay. Um, so every game, Barrett and Randall and Peyton to some degree, um, and Mitch Robinson are all going to be kind of in play. Now, Mitch Robinson, again, is not as like, you know, it's a, it's a little different with him because he's not going to play 36 minutes because he can just never, that's just not his thing. Right. But he can play 30, right. If, if you want. So he remains in play. Um, Julius Randall is just in play every day. Um, he's 9,800 now, which is really, really, really rough, man. But, uh, and it's kind of weird to think about this, but but the, the Knicks have blowout risk, sort of. Like it's like they, who would have thought it? Um, so Randall's good, Peyton is fine. I don't know, man. I'm looking at Peyton. At, he's going to be high on DraftKings somehow. I don't know about 6,500. Uh, and on the OKC side, um, Shea is always in play, and he's never going to get there, I guess. Um, <laughs> Baisley, maybe. Hamadou Diallo, again, is probably a good point per dollar play. I don't know. This, this Boy, this, this game kind of sucks also. Um, what about Dort at 4,400? I'm just trying to find some stupid stuff to play, but I, you know, I don't think you have to. I actually like Baisley. Um, I think as a guy who's going to get you 40 fantasy points, he actually does fit the bill for okay. me the guy going forward. I mean, he's got that in him. He's starting, they're starting to, to let him do a little bit more. 
so he's the one I, I, I would probably have the most interested in. I'm not overwhelmingly excited about it, but I don't mind him certainly here. Uh, I, it's hard for me to get to anyone else, to be honest with you. Uh, Shea makes, I think Shea at his price, like, yeah, whatever. It's, he got 50 in the last game in overtime. Um, great. I, I don't, I don't want to go nuts with it. He does, he does have a ton of usage, which is just, I don't know. It's, it's, it's not quite as high as it was at the beginning of the season, but it's, it's, I think the, the simple answer is on this slate, you know, do I want to play Shea Gildas Alexander? Do I want to play Fred Van Vliet or Kyle Lowry? I would rather play Fred Van Vliet and Kyle Lowry. That's just where I'm at. Okay. Um, um, side, I, I, liked, I like Mitchell Robinson. I don't think Austin Rivers is the worst play in the world playing all the minutes, but I'm not going to probably go there. And I, I would consider that both Randall and uh, well, Robinson will be, I think would be a, a, will be a terrific play if we get no New Orleans Noel. Uh, even if Noel does play, I still think Robinson's a good play. Uh, and I, and I like, uh, I, I always like Barrett's upside. And I think any, anytime he's under 7K, I'm going to have some interest, but I just don't think I'm going to end up getting there tonight realistically. Okay. So I want to put this in perspective. So back in 2015, okay, when I was coaching this game uh, over there and I saw this guy steal the ball and come down and dunk it, I never would have thought that four years later I would be saying it's Cole Anthony chalk day in the NBA. Um, but here we are. <laughs> here we are. Uh, here we are. Uh, oh. Oh, sorry about that. No worries. Is that you or me? It's not me. Oh, sorry. That's all right. So, uh, yeah, so for those of you who haven't been following along, so we, we coached against Cole Anthony back in eighth grade, um, and uh, and he is the chalkiest player on the slate in the NBA daily fantasy sports world today. Um, I, just, I, I don't know if he's the chalkiest, but he'll, he'll be up there. He'll be, he'll be popular. In any case, so Markel Fultz, unfortunately, I mean, that guy can't get a freaking break. He's fine. You know what? He was playing well. Sad, you know I mean? man. He was. He was. Guy can't get a break. That ACL is rough business, man. And um, so here we are, uh, Cole Anthony, and it's they pick, they pick what's historically a decent spot to get to get some run, man, playing against Houston. Um, so he rates to be a very, very strong play. Uh, I, presume, I presume he's going to start. Right. I presume he's going to start and go right into it. And uh, he's been very, he's been very good. He's been very, uh, he, he gets some assists. He shoots some floaters. He has good decision-making and he's going to be a good play and he's going to be extremely chalky. I hope he doesn't start keeping some of the chalk off of him and getting him, getting him run without Vucevic on the court. Yeah, um, he, he will though. He'll, yeah. He, he'll, either way he'll get the run, but I would like it if no, that's I mean. It's, yeah, you're right. He probably will. But um. I, I really think Terrence Ross is a phenomenal play here too. I like, I like Cole Anthony, by the way, just to make that clear. But Terrence Ross, if we have no Fournier, especially, uh, I think this is a, there's a much bigger boost to this whole offense without, without, uh, without Fultz than maybe people are going to pick up on, including Vooch. And Vooch has a great matchup against whatever big men we're going to see on the other side in Houston. Um, so they're all interesting to me. And I, I hate playing Aaron Gordon on big slates, especially at these prices but I also think he'll get an uptick. I just don't think I'm going to end up getting there. I do like Terrence Ross. I do like Cole Anthony. That's mo most of my interest, but I'm, I'm probably going to have a couple of Vooch lineups because I, I believe he can beat the hell out of everybody. They're going to throw at him on the other side. Uh, you don't want to go back to your, to your Dwayne Bacon this time, huh? Yeah. I want to, I want to uh, bring home the bacon, fry it up in the pan and throw it in the garbage. I'm not playing <laughs> that guy ever again. Uh, I just don't play. I don't want to play guys like that. I just don't. I know he was, and he was like awesome in the last game and he put up 24. You know what I mean? Like that's like as best you can do. Uh, uh, one Bruce Brown a week for me, honestly. There um, go. So uh, I want I want to emphasize a couple of things about the guys you mentioned. Number one is, uh, you know, maybe Houston's different or whatever, but but you could still want to play guys that want to get in a three point shooting contest with Houston, and and Terrence Ross just fits that perfectly. So so uh, I like that. And the other thing is, we transition, I guess, to the Houston side is something you kind of kind of mentioned and talk about you feel bad for Mark Hell Fultz. Let, let me tell you who I feel bad for. Sort of. I mean I feel bad for him. So I feel as though like DeMarcus Cousins, like really his the his his assemblage of injuries really cost what could have been a Hall of Fame career. You know, like like and I say that because 
I saw him play, you know, in this last game where he was like 30 minutes or whatever. And, you know, we all had him at like 100% ownership, whatever. Dude, this guy can't jump. He can't guard a soul. I mean, like, if, if, if he has to play, like, if he has to start again, like, Vooch is going to get 30 fantasy points in the first quarter. I mean, like, it's – they might not even let him guard him. You know what I mean? Like, it's and, – and even the announcers were, were – when, when he got a rebound, I said, well, that's as much as he's going to jump nowadays. You know what I mean? Like, so, yeah, I mean, because uh, it's a guy I root for now, you know, Cousins. You know, every come, guy comes off all those injuries, you know. I was good – glad to see him put up points and, you know, whatever. But Vooch is going to just – like you said, whoever they got guarding him, he's going to – he's going to – he can obliterate them. Now, again, Vooch is not a guy that you think of as like obliterating people. You know what I mean? But this is a this is a nice spot for him to do it. And and 9K, I think, is very, very reasonable. Um, so that's 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 my emphasis in addition to the guys that you mentioned on Orlando. Um, so Houston remains questionable. And in, in, even though I just what even though I just said all that stuff about cousins, if once again Wood is out. Once again, Cousins is a lock. I mean, like, it's, it's the way it is. <laughs> he is, yeah, but I want to actually embrace, like, the chance of him not being as much of a lock today. Just All because right, let's do it. he played 23 minutes in a close game, didn't play down the stretch. No. Um, won't probably, I wouldn't guess that it would be a whole lot different. Indiana plays two bigs. So doing going against a team with only one big, uh, um, it's probably there would even be some downside there. Now, in terms of fantasy point per minute, nothing has changed about Cousins. He might not be able to jump or do anything. Right. The guy is going to just demolish fantasy-wise every time he's on the court. It doesn't matter if he's playing with James Harden. He might be the only one. It doesn't matter if he's playing with James Harden. It doesn't matter who he's playing with. He is going to be extremely high usage, extremely active. But not even the usage as much as the activity level. He's just going to get a million rebounds. He's going to get yeah. blocks. But he had four blocks and two steals. So if he becomes the mega chalk, Playing a guy who's going to play a lot more minutes in Tice as a cheaper price, who may who, whose ownership will go down a little bit if if that does happen with a uh, with Wood, uh, just probably worth considering. You know what I mean? Um, probably, you know, I don't know. It's just worth at least being open to the fade. Not to say that I won't have plenty of. What do you do with Harden and Wall and Wood if they play, or what, what do you do with the? With the I think Wood is playable if he plays. Um, I don't love it. I don't love any any of these guys, but I, I think that when that when that happens with Houston in these spots and you get the no own James Harden thing, it's just it's happened so many times, man. We've seen it too many too many times. I know he's doing the assist thing this year, but uh, yeah, there's always the 50 real life potential, and there's always the potential 50 with 10 and 50 and 15 or something like that. Um, so I, he's just always going to be in the mix for me. Not to mention, they really don't have anybody to guard him. <laughs> Like, well, that's the other thing about Harden, man. I think would, you think he might uh, he might relish uh, the chance. Say, okay, Mr. Cole Anthony, welcome to the NBA. Here's fifty. You know yeah, what I mean? like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's very possible. And and he's just if he gets going, he's just going to get keep going. That's the way it is. So so Harden is actually I think a really good play today. And I actually I actually think you could make an argument for Harden, Wood, and Wall. But I, I I think Harden might be just if he does get entirely overlooked, we should just revisit it because there's another spend up that's a good play as well. And Harden definitely like doesn't seem like the right play if you look at the recent numbers and the trends. But overall, um, we just it just I'm always going to play the guy with the highest upside when no one's going to play him. Okay, so this is this is this is kind of sick, all right? But so we talk about Brooklyn uh, Brooklyn against Memphis, right? And my uh, look, I look at this, I'm like, all right. Fucking, excuse me, like, LaVert's not 10K, so, you know, let's play him, right? Yep. Um, I was I was watching some some podcasts today, and I, I was watching, I was actually listening, I was walking to work, I was listening to them. And there was, like, this backlash. It was like, well, he was terrible, he, just only because he was shooting a lot, he was 9 for 25, he's taking some terrible shots, he hasn't really... He won been, the game easily, and he dominated. And, 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 and all I'll say is, I mean, I know what I saw, Guy's freaking insane. You know, I don't want to hear awesome. it. I, I kind of don't want to hear it. Um, and if 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 you're if people are really not going to play him again somehow, <laughs> well, I mean, this it's like a joke. <laughs> There's no way they won't. I mean, <laughs> they're going to play him, right? <laughs> like, we're going to play him. Yeah, it's, it's. I think people might be just kind of just intentionally saying that to hopefully keep ownership down. I don't know what they're doing to be honest with you. And to try and argue that he didn't play well last night. 
you know what happens in, in basketball? Sometimes you, you, you know what's a bad shot? The shot that doesn't go in. Those shots that they're calling bad, we're calling bad shots. All he did was attack, 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 yeah. attack, attack. And not, not, to, not, not to mention steals, assists. I mean, the guy's a freaking usage machine. And if it were, I'm telling you, if it weren't for Joe Harris having a tremendous game, I mean, Le- Le- LeVert would have had 60. You know what I mean? Like, it was, uh, it was uh, so I, I'm just, he's just, I'm just putting him in. Levert has had a 41% usage in the last game. He had a 43% usage in the previous game, and Kyrie played that game. Um, this, you, I mean, look, it's it, fade at your own risk, and I and I think that by the end of the day, if he gets to be too crazy on a giant state, maybe I'll leave him out of one or two lineups, you know? But right. what are we really talking about here? Like, it, it, maybe there's a blowout risk. If people want to say that. I don't really know what that how that works exactly. There's your worry about Brooklyn maybe uh, maybe having COVID. That, 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 that's a possibility, but I don't know, man. I, I, it's a tough fade for me. And the other thing is that they, they make, they, they make a Cole Anthony conveniently available at shooting guard so that you could put Levert in, or you could make Levert conveniently available at small forward. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, mm-hmm. uh, so you could play him easily. I, I, I just think you probably want to take that opportunity to do it. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yep. I agree. Uh, uh, you like anything on Memphis? Well, I, I want to say I like Joe Harris still again, and I'm going to oh. sort of, sort of eat a little bit of my own words only because I've watched him play a little bit more. I can see this team. They, they seem to love Joe Harris. First of all, they're always trying to hunt him shots, which I love. It's what you should do with shooters. And including when KD was there and Kyrie was there, they're literally out there begging him, shoot the ball. This guy's shooting 51% from three point range. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Um, and he's going to get looks. Uh, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to, and by the way, on top of it, he was really good. Aside from that, he was creating a little bit. He gets some, get some rebounds. He's 5,500. He was, Five percent owned on a five-game slate yesterday. Uh, he probably will be higher owned today because of what he did yesterday. But I'm going to keep going back to this. I like the way this Brooklyn team goes. Um, I'll play a little bit of him. I'll play a little bit of you know, look, the Prince. Uh, same guys, TLC. same guys, right? I mean, just yeah, the Prince TLC thing is a, is a. But yeah, the question is tonight, do we need it as much? And probably not. But to consider that one of these guys, you know, TLC ended up taking over the second half minutes, and it sort of balanced out. So he ended up with 27. Prince ended up with, I believe, 23. One of these guys could, or 21, one of these guys ends up at 30 minutes, they, they suddenly become a really, really good play. I'm not like, it, like I, I'm not, I feel weird saying it, but I'm going to play a little bit of Prince. I don't think I'm going to play Jeff Green on this particular slate, but if you wanted to throw Chioza in there, um, you know, go ahead. It's, it, it, I, don't, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. Um, yeah, I mean, it's mostly though it's Levert for me and with a little bit of the... Here's an observation also from yesterday is that, um, and we, I mean, we, we kind of knew this, but with the exception of Levert, like no, no starter is like, was like guaranteed like closing time. You know what I mean? Like, like, like whoever was, was he, Nash felt was the best opportunity. We're good. And he saw that Bruce Brown was sucking. So, so he barely played him at all in the second half. Mm-hmm. Um, he started him just uh, because he had to start him, whatever, I suppose. But, but then he didn't come back in the game and they left Chios in, you know what I mean? Cause he was doing well. So, so just because, like, for example, like a guy's coming off the bench, um, you know, he could still, like Joe Harris. Joe Harris came off the bench, and he was hot. And so he got, you know, and so he was rewarded for it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So so it's not like they were locked into any kind of rotation. So don't don't well, be – Joe Harris is always going to close every game that's close. He he, he is locked into 30-plus But it was, wasn't close, really. <laughs> no, but he's locked into 30-plus minutes. Right. And he also, he also did go 10 – I think he made 10 in a row at some point or something. I mean, he, played, he played 40 minutes in games with Ky, with Ky, Kyrie and KD this year. So, yeah. I, well, maybe he's not guranteed 30. He's well, guaranteed 28-plus well, minutes. But my point is that if, if somebody you like on Brooklyn is not starting, I wouldn't worry about it. You yeah. know what I mean? At these prices. I totally agree. Um, um, what do you think of, uh, you like the centers at all for Brooklyn? No. So it depends on, I, I think they're going to play DeAndre on the back-to-back um, because he only played 18 minutes and he played really well, actually. Uh, but I, it's another one you worry about. I mean, it, Jared Allen was, was the nuts for a while and they just didn't play him for huge stretches of time, partially because, because DJ was going well. Yeah. But um, he got minutes. Didn't he played like over 30 minutes? Didn't 28 he? minutes. 28. Okay. No, he left, he left, he left with four minutes to go in the third quarter. Didn't come back for with three minutes to go. Sorry. And sorry, in the first quarter. And he didn't come back with until three minutes to go at the end of the, in the second, that's a pretty long rotation out. Um, again he's got upside in every matchup so I, I have some interest but it's a big slate um what do you what do you want to do what do you want to do with memphis specifically uh, i want to ask you a couple of guys number one is 
is is the guy we talked about, the um, uh, Melton. I mean, he only played 20 minutes, but he was great in the 20 minutes he played. Um, the I wouldn't. I think that he could play on a back to back rather easily, actually. Well, and, he just came off an injury. Don't forget. Oh, okay. That's why his minutes are down. He's. I mean, he could easily be up in the in the 24 to 28 minute range. He's. I mean, they were closing with him. And and Brandon Clark. I mean, he had 20, probably 25 fantasy points in the first half, right, or something? That I mean, was he, very tilting. And I also was really tilting. He was 7% owned, and I was just like, I was ready to count my money, and he just nothing. He had negative fantasy points in the fourth quarter. Not to mention the, the, the little the nine rebounds, the, the, ultra, the ultra the ultra, the ultra uh, double tilt. Yep. Um, so there's him. Uh, again, none of the Memphis guys really stand out for me. So I was just wondering if you liked anybody over there. I think that Melton, well, first of all, let's make sure that Melton's playing. If okay. for some reason he's not, I do like Melton, first of all, a little bit, if he does play. But I, if he's some reason he's not, we go right to Dylan Brooks, Kyle Anderson. He, okay. he takes away from these guys because he, these guys were supposed to be usage monsters without everybody. But the truth is Melton takes away enough of that and Joe Val. Um, but I do think Joe Val on the back-to-back in general, they almost always limit him. So I think that you're going to see a little bit less of him tonight, uh, probably. And I don't know. It, it could open up some more room for those guys. So I've sort of got them on, on FanDuel a little bit because, um, you know, Anderson's 5.9 over there, a little bit more, you know, affordable. Um, but I, I don't, like, feel great about any of it. I just – I have a little bit of interest. in Brooklyn – I mean, honestly, the teams that have played Brooklyn, Brooklyn will play fast, and they don't play a ton of defense. Um, nope. So I think that they're, they're worth taking shots. I think Brandon Clark would be my favorite, though. You want to um, – okay. You want to play um, – want to play Giannis and Donovan Mitchell? Yes. You want to play, play Rudy Gobert? You want to play Rudy Gobert? Well, this is the, the, the other game. This is that other game, you know, that we get – I love Rudy Gobert on DraftKings especially. Yeah, right. Um, you know, we're going to have some, some good center options today, um, that's for sure. Uh, Rudy Gobert definitely being one of them. It, uh, you know, I, I, I'm i telling you, I, I've seen it before plenty of times against this Utah team, and I don't want to go back and bring up all my things. We, we've seen the stars, how they play against this Utah team, and they go nuts. Uh, I think this is a spot where Giannis could have his uh, have his best game of the season so far, and I think he's affordable. I think that in a close game, Giannis is basically always going to get you almost 60, yep. almost no matter what. Yep. So he's, he's well in play, um, Giannis, today for me. But the problem is, again, I like some of the spending a little bit lower, you know, on this slate uh, a little bit better. Donovan Mitchell is certainly a, certainly a guy who can who you can go to. Um, I'm still iffy on if for some reason it feels hard to pull the trigger when they're up with Conley there and all these guys. It's just I'm finding it a little bit trickier. So I also do like uh, I like Holiday and uh, Holiday and Middleton uh, a bit. Middleton more on draft on FanDuel, but. I think Holiday's in play. I mean, he's 6,600. We haven't seen that many close games, so it's hard to get a real barometer. But this game should be close and competitive. Uh, and even Joe Ingles sneaks into the mix because you want to beat this team. You want to you want to beat Milwaukee from the outside. So anybody who can get hot from three-point range is going to be somewhat interesting. Joe Ingles still doesn't ever shoot enough of them, but he makes a ton of them. He's a great shooter. Um, Mike Conley, you know, you could argue for him. Drew Holiday would probably have to guard one of him or – he or Mitchell if he has to guard Mitchell I do think it takes away a little bit of Mitchell's upside but yes they're all in play if I had to rank them in this game it would be Gobert then Giannis I'm sorry Giannis nah close between those two Giannis Gobert uh probably Holiday then Mitchell for me on DraftKings and then Middleton then Mitchell on FanDuel boy as much as I like playing Zion I mean Gobert is 400 less yep I mean, you could play both of those guys. I've had – this literally feels like it's been the staple of most of my lineups. The one thing about Gobert is that, look, we know he's got more upside than he's shown, and you have a team in Milwaukee that likes to attack. Uh, we've seen what centers can do against Milwaukee in the past. It's, it's, it's a pretty pretty okay spot. The one thing you don't, you don't like is that Brooke Lopez will take him away from the basket and even Bobby Portis while he's in. That's um, very true. But still, I, I, I think that uh, – I still think Gobert is a strong play. That's, a, that's an interesting point, though, that I forgot about. The, the Brooke Lopez thing. Yeah, it's it's a little concerning. All right, you want to uh, press the, on? The, the one long, large field flyer you got to take. Oh, sorry. Bogdanovich on Fandle is 4.8. He's interesting over there, but you want him with three. He's been really cold. He hasn't been shooting the ball well. 
he can always put up 35 fantasy points. He can throw up 35 real life points. And this, he's the other shooting guy that makes a lot of sense here to me. Um, not in love with a 5,300 price tag, but he's on my list. And then I expect one of these Utah guys to get hot and go off. I just don't know which one. And then on a giant field tournament, you play Jordan Clarkson a tiny bit. Yeah, I'll help you on this. So I'm telling you, Mitchell, Mitchell will be the guy I'll go off. Okay. <laughs> that's, 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 no, I mean, that's, that, that's, that sounds like the safe thing to do. Here's the only thing that I worry about is um, is if Drew Holiday just stays glued to him. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's capable enough to where even with that, I think he can still get his. But, yeah, I, I understand. You want to move on? Yep. Is it really possible that Steph is out? If that happens, I'm going to be really upset. I think it's very possible. I know, me too. But we also thought it was very possible one of the Lakers was yesterday. Yeah, but I think that was more people just like, I don't know. Like, I, I was never really – convinced that was the case except for that that they're always listed as questionable Mm -hmm. let me see oh so he was downgraded to questionable after tweaking his thing on wednesday yeah i i I, he's got a pretty good run going right now i get the feeling that especially with draymond playing that he's going to want to play um i know he struggled in that game against the clippers but i don't know i honestly i'm treating it as of right now as as if he's going to play what if he doesn't? Okay, let's let's talk about if he plays. Okay, if he does okay, so if he doesn't play, um, we can talk about that. So uh, you're gonna have Damian Lee, your your man, your Christmas man, yeah. um, Kelly Oubre and and Wiggins, who both supposedly got hurt a little bit in the practice, but they're both on not on the injury report. Um, they they become obviously more interesting, but I mean, the, the, you know, let's let's. It's I think it's time to start playing some Draymond Green in general, guys. Like let's let's do it. Um, Fifty one hundred. I know he hasn't put up the game yet. The minutes are ticking in the right direction. I actually don't think it's any. I, I think it's like like obviously he gets a little bit of a boost because they run the offense through him with with Steph out. But I think he's fine with Steph in. Uh, I like Draymond and I like Kelly Oubre in this game a little bit, but I mostly like Draymond. He's the he's my favorite play on their side. If we get no Steph, Damian Lee. Um, I'm trying to think who else would they were going to give the, the point minutes to. Um, boy, they don't really have a natural. I mean, it'll be Draymond playing point guard, basically. Um, uh, Wanamaker would be, I guess, Wanamaker, if he's officially starting, would be in play for sure. I don't want to play him. Do I have to play him? No, you don't have to. I mean, he's been a little better production per minute wise this season. And he actually, even, even towards the end of last season, I think he's a really good player in real life. Like, I think he's a good backup. I think he's the kind of backup you'd want to have on a good team. But, I mean, look, these are not the most exciting things in the world. Damian Lee would be your upside guy. What about um, – and if, the, if he does play, you like Steph? Yeah, I do. Um, I don't want to go nuts with it. It's not like we have a great matchup for him here. Um, but I kind of like some pieces on the other side. So, so I think running, you know, with Draymond and Steph, I think you could play them together. Sometimes I don't think I'd want to do that on this slate entirely. Like, I just think, I think there's better plays, I guess, than. So I mean, tell, me, tell me who you like on the other side, because I, I was just kind of uh, just looking at the top guys and hoping one of them was out and the other one, could play, you know, I could play them or something like that. So who, who do you like from the secondary guys? I, I haven't been, I'm not very impressed with the golden state's defense in general. I'll tell you that. Um, I know Kawhi had a didn't have a good game in the other in the same spot the other night, but I would go back to Kawhi. I would consider going right, right back to Kawhi. Um, he would be probably be my preferred play, just because okay. I I feel like he's a little too you know he's ninety three hundred. I think he's still let you know there's room for him to get to his fifty plus there. Uh, I I think Paul George is now appropriately priced, but I actually think that you know again another guy with upside here. Uh, he put a he shot five for fifteen the other night and put up fifty five. So I'm mean forty five. He can he can get to fifty five. So they're both in my, on my list. And I like Beverly. I mean, I assume, especially with Steph there, Beverly's minutes have been pretty awesome this season lately anyway. So I would be happy to go for Beverly. He's 3,800 on Fando, 4,100 on DraftKings. I think he's one of the initial uh, value guys who, who may get overlooked. And he's been getting more of the Lou Williams run, you know, the, the, the Williams minutes. Uh, but Lou Williams, again, can always shoot himself into a game. And if there was a team he could do it against, you'd think this would be one of those teams. He didn't do it the other night against them, but – like it's a long it's a you know at this point it's crazy to say it at this price but Luke, Lou Williams is strictly a large field tournament play for me I think it's I think if Steph is out one of the Clippers sits well maybe but I also think that regardless I like Luke Kennard I think that um Ooh. yeah I think that again again they 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 picked him up for a reason they want to they want him to play I think 
No, I agree. I, and I, I'm not looking hard. If this game gets a little, little, little fishy, they might just let him roll. I don't know. That, that, that would be my. He's another one who can shoot his way in, but it just it feels it doesn't feel right on this slate to me. But I, I hear you. Um. Yeah. So I, I guess that's it from this game, right? I, just, I really, oh man, it's ten o'clock also. Yeah, we got a better one. Really coming. nice if they if they announced that he was whether he was playing or not. So, so Chicago, LA, and there's another thing I was going to say by the way about so I didn't want to curse it. I saw I saw that you texted me last night when you were doing well. I mean, I just, I, I just knew there were all those studs that were just waiting to freaking go go off. So I didn't get didn't want to get too emotionally invested in it. In all in all fairness, all you say that, but at the at halftime, I was in phenomenal shape. Yes, you were. Like, phenomenal. I was, up, I was upstairs. I'm like, is it worth me going down now? Wait, and then um. But you know, it's almost a year. It's been that long since your uh, since the uh, since your Valentine's Day hit. I call it your Valentine's Day hit, um, where where you I, I think it was was it a hundred? It might have been a hundred. I'm not sure. Yeah, it was close. It was a hundred because I remember I had like like point two four two four two four two four. I think on on State Kings, I think or something like that. Um, that was the one where they, they suspended your account for because I logged in that one time or something yeah. like that. That's Remember right. we had we had to email them. Yep. But I mentioned it because I, I really had a feeling that you were going to do it last night because I don't know if you remember it, but the hundred K win was exactly the same type of thing. You had LeBron at no ownership. Yep. And and it was like the last guy left and he went and he went off and and went off. You won you won like easily. I think like you won that like handily. So when I, so that that was why I really had a feeling that somehow it was going to happen. Um, anyway, so you get another chance tonight if you want. So 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 tonight you have uh, you have Zach Levine at all against uh, against whoever feels like playing for the Lakers tonight. Um, I think this is a perfect opportunity for one of them to sit. Um, uh, so again, I, I would I would watch for that. I would almost anticipate that in a way. Um, mm-hmm. So I would, I would, I would run, I would run it, man. I know, I know Lakers are tough defensively, but I would, I would run Levine with whichever remaining Laker remains in the lineup to hopefully keep the game close enough to let them play 30, 35 minutes. Um, if both of them play, I think, I think it, it, it poses problems um, for, for game script mm-hmm. for, for, for Chicago. Um, uh, not that I won't have a couple of shares of Levine anyway, because I always do. Um but uh, that, that, would, that would be my initial take on this game. That's the best I can describe it. Yeah. Um, I'm not 100% sure they're going to sit. Neither of them are even questionable, which is interesting. And not to, say, it's not to say that would be the first time that happened. But first of all, it's like the first time I haven't seen Anthony Davis questionable in, I think, two years. <laughs> and it just sort of shocked me. They also lost last night in a game. They don't look oh, very good right did. now. That's right. I, so that, I think you might see a little bit of a... Uh, okay, we come to play tonight kind of a thing, which probably kills a little bit of the fantasy love in this game because yeah. <laughs> they're a good defensive team. Yeah. Um, even if they go off, there could be a, some, some potential blowout risk. Um, but, but let's wait and see. I mean, Vegas thinks they're playing, obviously, with a 10-point spread. Uh, I still think that Schroeder on, on FanDuel at 5,300 is, is, yep. is in play. Yep. Um, and probably not going to go there on DraftKings. But, but if, if for some reason we, we do get news that one of them is out, you know, I do think you want to play the other one. And like you said, you can run Levine with that guy or, uh, or you could run, you know, we, we, got, we got to see a little bit of the, uh, well, that was sort of the perfect environment for him, but Kobe white just went completely bananas the other night against Sacramento, uh, looked absolutely awesome. So he's, he's, he's reaching that he's getting up there. And I think on FanDuel, these guys are a little more affordable, including Otto Porter, by the way, who you could throw into a mix with these guys at 5.6 on FanDuel, but on DraftKings, it's a little harder. Denzel Valentine is interesting. Um, that was that was uh, both these these are your two guys, right? Your Temple well, the, Valentine. The sad part is that not playing him the other night over over Temple cost me two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's all. <laughs> no, no, big, no big deal. So it feels like okay. Well, you know, this is the spot where I go back to. I don't know. Um, look, Temple's going to play a boatload of minutes. I, I don't mind having him as a part of your your thing if you do think if the game, again if, if this game stays close, you know, you're not you're not going to get that much from him. But at twenty five would probably be okay with you. I think there's other better value. And I think that same thing with Valentine, but just to say that, you know, in a blowout or anything else, even but Valentine can always get it going. I mean, he's, he's got a pretty nice offensive game. I, as of right now, I don't really know if I can play any of these bulls. like and say they're good plays outside of a sort of a mini stack. If one of the Lakers are out, but that's where I'm at. Um, okay. Um, I'm FanDuel, by the way, if one of them are out is 4,100 still. Who is? 
Kuzma, um, if one of them are out. All right, so you, you alluded to this last game a, a little bit earlier when you said, oh, well, why should I take this guy when I can just take Lowry and Van Fleet? So now here we are, right? So um, fast-paced fast pace game um, for Toronto, park upgrade, so to speak. Um, so the big three, the way I like the big three, uh, Lowry, Van Vliet, and Siakam are all kind of good plays in this spot. Uh, I'll let you handle other guys. Uh, from the Sacramento side, so Fox is, oh my God, Fox will be decided closer to game time. Very nice. Um, a little oh, the worst nightmare because we have the Fox. real locks of all locks in this game. So, yeah, so I watched, uh, and, and you know, I, I never really heard too much of him, and I, so I watched him his last game. Yeah, that kid's good. Um, I told you he's really good. <laughs> yeah, that kid's good. Really good. The kid is definitely good. So we're referring to Tyrese Halliburton, um, and if Fox does not play, uh, yeah, you're, you're going to want that. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, uh, well, that's, that's, Holmes, by the way, questionable. What, what's that? Also, Holmes is questionable, like legitimately. Ay, ay, ay. And if Holmes is out, you know, we can go over to be elite. Speaker, speaker, speaker. Sorry about that. We can go over to Bielitsa without Holmes. We can go to uh, Bagley. You know, you know, by the way, Bagley played 29 minutes. He was 8 for 14 from the field. He was awesome. 12 rebounds, 46 fantasy points, and did not close the game. Yeah, he's not going to. That's what's going to happen. I don't understand. Oh, I, I, I kind of understand a little bit. I mean, that's awesome. Why is he not close to the game? Well, know. they won the game. He can't defend anyone. He's awful defensively, like okay. beyond awful. All right. And when they're up at the end of the games, they're going to they're gonna play their defensive guys instead of him. And it's, it's hard to fit him in with their – they want to play – you know, with, without Fox, they play Halliburton, uh, Halliburton healed, uh, uh, sometimes Joseph, Barnes, and, and uh, Holmes. If Holmes is out, though, this is going to be – we should look at uh, Bielitsa. If Fox is out, some people might jump to Corey Joseph, and I think that's not the worst idea in the world if he's going to be low-owned, but I don't know. Hold if on. He's Hold on. If, if Holmes is out – I'm not Holmes. I'm sorry. If, uh, if, if Excuse me. If Fox no, is out. No, if Holmes is out, because you oh, just you, said that. No, I meant if Fox is out, Joseph. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, so if Holmes is out, are they not, like, forced to play Whiteside finally? Oh, no, no, absolutely. He's in, like, I, I actually, it's funny, there's no projection for him, but it might be Whiteside and it might be Bielitsa. So just We just got to keep an eye out for it. I don't know what to do with that. I don't think it's worth, like, is there another value we have that's ultra value on the last thing? No. Uh, you know what you could do is leave 100 because Whiteside, I believe they priced him up a little bit, which is weird. 3,200. <laughs> oh, my God, never mind. Um, so, okay, so here's what you can do. Um, first of all, I'm going to have all, all Toronto in this game anyway. I'm, I'm loving it. I think that, again, these guys get overlooked. And I honestly don't really have a good explanation for why. The minutes are more secure with them. They are playing in the absolute nut matchup. Fred Van Vliet has scored, you know, 50 twice in his last three games, and it would have been like 65 in one of those if he if they were a little closer. Um, they ended up getting blown out against Boston. They've really struggled this year. They're going to get everything they can handle. If for some reason this game does stay close, I think you're going to see just a million minutes out of these guys, and I think you're looking at, like, to me, I would have them projected at, at in, in the 45 range each, Lowry and Van Vliet. And, that me, and I think there's plenty of upside on that. I think, I think, I think their projections are, are low. Um, I like, I like Ananubi. Uh, I think this is a great environment for him. I know he hasn't, uh, let, lit the world on fire or anything lately, but he's a part of a stack I'm considering. And I like Siakam actually. I think this is, might be the Siakam thing. So you don't want to play all these guys together, obviously, but playing two or three of them, I think is actually in play here. And Siakam finally looked like the old Siakam the other night and felt like a little bit reassured to see that he also, uh, you know, he, he needs to rebound the ball a little bit better. There should be more opportunities for that in this game. So I really like all of these guys. Um, and if I had to rank them, I would go Lowry, I'd probably, maybe Van Vliet, maybe Van Vliet, Lowry, Siakam. But I, I do think Siakam is closer to them than he usually is tonight. And I also think Norman Powell's in play. And what I was going to say is you could play Norman Powell, leave some money on the table and switch over to Whiteside if you wanted to. Um, that's, that's oh, or, okay. that or, or you could play Bielitsa, or, I mean, or, or you could switch over to Bielitsa, either one. It'll give you the option to do either one, obviously. Um, the one, okay, look, this is, call me crazy. This is nuts. This doesn't make any sense from a logic standpoint. 
Oh, it sounds sounds good to me. Where, where do I sign? Chris Boucher. Um, I think that he might get more minutes than 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 we're seeing from him. And and look, if this guy plays like twenty eight minutes, he's going to put up forty fantasy points. That seems unlikely. They'll play twenty eight minutes, but why not? You know, do they do we need to play Alex? Do they need to play Alex Len against Sacramento? Do they need? I mean, sure, revenge and all that. Um, do they need to, to play Aaron Baines? And, and it's sort of trending to, towards Boucher getting a little bit more run than these guys. I just don't like that all three of them are in the mix. But if for some reason one of them's out tonight and we get those extra few minutes, just looking at Boucher at 5K is he's a wild card. It's a huge, long, large field tournament play. It's not something you should do with your high buy-in stuff. But it is a guy you should consider for large, large field GPPs. Do you think Halliburton is playable if Fox is playing? Slightly. Um, Enough so to where, yeah, if you, if you could have a 2v2 ready, by the way, uh, sorry, I also like Fox if he plays, <laughs> and I think you could run him back on the other side with the other guys, um, but I don't like him as much as the, as the other guards. Ah, close. Uh, yes, he's probably in play, Halliburton, but I don't think he would be a good play. I mean, we're going to need to know about this Holmes and Fox news. That's really, really huge information, and I don't care how much he struggled. I don't care how much he sucked this year. I don't care that he went three for 15. In fact, I like that he went three for 15 because he's, you know, if people really want to get off Buddy Heald on FanDuel, they can go ahead and do it. I am not going to be one of those people. I will be riding him at 5,200. Um, he's everything's secure. He's just not making shots. So I have no problem with just loading up on Buddy Heald. And by the way, even not making shots, he still has put up over 20 fantasy points in every game. So at 5,200, it's not like he's killing you anyway. You know what I mean? It's going to put up over 20 fantasy points like 95% of the time or 90% of the time. Um, and he's going to put up 35, I think, enough here. So he just hasn't shot the ball well. I expected the change. Not going to pay 6,700 on DK, but on FanDuel, I definitely like Buddy Heald. So we got a lot to get to, so I guess we'll just we'll kind of wrap it up. Yeah. Um, now, with the exception of this, I guess we'll summarize. With the exception of all this injury news, which which we just really can't do anything about until we see, yep. I think that my uh, the guys that I'm just, you know, I'm going to have are going to be um, – are going to be Cole Anthony, Karis Levert. Those are the those are the those are the first guys that kind of jumped off the page. And then and then I'd like to play Giannis in a competitive game. So so I think that those are my three guys I'm going to start with. I guess. Yeah. So I'm I'm just going to read my my list of, of yeah. priority plays: Levert, Tatum, uh, Tice. T T I mean, Tatum Brown and Smart, one of those three, but I, I really like, I think Tatum is the best play. I like them all on, on FanDuel. They're all better. I mean, especially uh, Brown and Smart are much better priced over there at, at, at 8K and, and 5,900. Um, so I like them over there. Halliburton, Lowry, Van Vliet, um, Gobert. I think Melton is still, if he, if I get the, we get the word that he really think he's going to play normal minutes. I, I'm, I'm into going back to him for some value potentially on DraftKings. Um, uh, Cole Anthony, uh, Siakam and Zion are my the guys who I've circled and I have significant interest in as of right now. Okay. Um, we, real quick, I, I do just want to I'll just say on FanDuel, um, I, lo I love that we had some, some 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 questions from some of the guys who follow us and can we can we focus it? So I'll just I'll just quickly say I, I did already build a my initial script on FanDuel, so I can just say the guys I like at each position real quick if that's okay with you. I'll take you take take your time. I'll I'll do that. My I'll do that also. I, okay. I can I can sort them this way. Go ahead. Perfect. All right. Uh, so point guard, um, I have as my priority one. Let's see, where is Cole Anthony? Oops, I lost my page. I'll, I'll start. My top guy actually on FanDuel is Elf Payton. Um, uh, and then Anthony is below him. And then this is mostly value guys, uh, Melton and Beverly. And then Marcus Smart would be my, I guess, spend up, I suppose, best way I can describe it. So actually, they're all about 5,500. So Payton, Anthony, and Marcus Smart. So it looks like paying down for point guard is where I'm going to end up. Yeah, I have a, uh, I've got like 30% written on like five guys here. So okay. <laughs> early, early in the day that'll happen. So uh, Cole Anthony, uh, Marcus Smart. I, I don't love the Marcus Smart at point guard thing. I'd rather use my shooting guard, but I'll still do it. Uh, Elf, Kyle Lowry, um, De'Aaron Fox, if he plays. <laughs> Steph Curry, if he plays, is my, or my next, or, my, or my, just my next tier down. Um, and that's pretty much my main guys over there. FanDuel uh, shooting guard for me, it's Levert. And then kind of a big spread. Uh, uh, Schroeder we mentioned before. Uh, and the other guy that you mentioned who's going to be probably unowned, uh, 
I mean, he's really cheap and he really hasn't done much, but, but Devontae Graham at 5,100. I mean, we, 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 I've touted him as a good play at 5,900, just like two games ago. You know what I mean? So, so at 5,100, I mean, I, I have to kind of just give him a little bit of a break. So uh, those are my, uh, at, at this time of the day, I guess, top looks, but then, you know, we're, 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 we're forgetting about, you know, Levine and like the high, you know, high points plays. These are kind of like my values. Yeah. Uh, my shooting guard, I, 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 I uh... I'm annoyed that J- the, the way they switch things around in Boston. It's appropriate, but I would rather Jalen Brown be a small forward. But I do like him at shooting guard anyway a little bit. Um, I love – obviously, I'm going to have a ton of Buddy Heald and Levert. Uh, I also will have a lot of Fred Van Vliet. And then I drop down to the Devontae Graham, Devin Booker situation, and Terrence Ross and Levine. They're all – all those guys I haven't seen. And Schroeder. Those are all my next tier. Um, Halliburton is going to be the guy if I if we get word on the Fox thing. My top three again, all things you know, all injury news considered as of now. At, sh- at small forward, I like uh, R.J. Barrett, uh, Tatum, and Ingram. Uh, ooh, I like I, I for some reason didn't circle R.J. Barrett, and I don't really know why over here. Um, what is? Let me see. What did I miss here? Yeah, they really did mix the positions around. All right, I, yeah, for some reason I just didn't go through that game. Yeah, R.J. Barrett, I, I think is fine. Um, sorry, let me just adjust my percentages real quick. And my other guys are in order: um, Tatum, number one; uh, Joe Harris, R.J. Barrett, R- Rui, uh, Middleton. I actually really like Middleton over here. I think he's a little just too cheap. And then I like Kyle Anderson. I want to go back to Kyle Anderson tonight. Um, 5,900, it's a better matchup. He struggled a lot in the last game. Not going to worry about it. And then OG, if I'm going to play those stacks. So I have a little bit of interest in OG, and, and the real cheap one is Garrett, uh, Sorry, is uh, Norman Powell. You like OG on DraftKings better than Bojan Bogdanovic? He's uh, he's more expensive. So I, I actually – I would rather have Bogdanovic in the savings. I know it's not that much savings, but it's, you know, it's 500. It's not nothing. Um. Power for power forward on draft on, on FanDuel. I'll go back to uh, well. First of all, if um, if LeBron is out, uh, I'm playing AD. I might play AD anyway. Um, actually, maybe not. I don't. I don't think that. I don't know. Maybe you do need those points again. Like maybe no, because you have uh, you could have Randall. You can get points out of him. Yeah. So I, I, I'm going to go back to Brandon Clark again at 5100. Um, and then. Uh, I don't know. You want to play? Oh no, Tristan Thompson's out, right? Um, yeah, Zion again. Those are my top two, I suppose. Yeah, um, Zion, Brandon Clark for me, uh, followed by Draymond. I like Dr- Draymond a lot, actually. So I might bump him up to the same level as those guys. Uh, Giannis, um, Siakam, uh, Bogdanovich. Those are my my main guys over there. Wow, Mitchell Rob- center. I think Mitchell Robinson is like my favorite play by like a, by like a lot. Um, let's see. Yeah. I think that he's a good play. Uh, let me, but who's playing tonight. What do you mean? What centers are there tonight? Tice. Oh, uh, no, I know that, but I mean that, that like, there's nobody high priced tonight. That's what I'm, I'm just, Oh yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah. I mean, we'll see about what happens with the cousin situation. If he, oh, right. if he might become one of the plays. Uh, really cheap over here is is Joe Val, but you're right. It doesn't feel like there's anybody up there that we need to to have. I, I do think that kind of makes an interesting case though for for Vooch. Um, maybe maybe spending up over here because it seems so obvious that everyone else is going to go a different route. And and maybe maybe overpaying for Gobert at 8,400 is not the worst idea in the world uh, with the shot blocking upside. Uh, but yeah, and then, then we'll, we'll need to find out about the Rashawn Holmes thing. Yeah, I'm telling you, I think that, that I mean, if, unless the Rashawn Holmes thing and other stuff opens up, I, I'm, I'm kind of uh, into Vooch and, and Mitch Robinson, and that's that's going to make my life a lot easier. Um, yeah, and it's, yeah, just depending on uh, the Houston situation, obviously, and, and, uh, and all that. Um, one thing that's interesting is that Gasol, I don't believe, has been sitting on the back-to-backs entirely, but don't be surprised if he does. And that will make uh, Montrez Harrell in a, in a really good matchup a decent play, I think. Um, I also think it would make, on the other side, Wendell Carter more in play. Not, I don't love him, but those are the other pivots off of the, the so chalky. We don't, I don't like, uh, we don't like uh, taco season at 3,500. I, I mean, look, I'm considering everything, but I, I just think... Or... 
It just I, I, think, I, I think I'd find the 400 for DeAndre Jordan if you want to know the truth. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you want to do that either, by the way, on a back-to-back with DeAndre Jordan. But uh, but Tice would just be the guy, I think. It's just hard to hard to avoid it for me. Um, boy, I really wish Robert Williams was playing so I could pivot off of him and, and play some more. <laughs> but not going to happen tonight, I guess. No time, Lord. But yes, yeah, so that's that's the first look. I think that's pretty much what we got for now. And we, we're going to obviously have some news later. We're going to have new stuff that we haven't expected to see. And uh, we'll get that to you guys at 6 Eastern. That sounds good. Um, all right, Bobby, you fire up the next one for me? Yeah, we're going to do some football and we'll have that back for you guys. Good luck to everyone out there. And we'll see you at the top of the leaderboards.